Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to answer a question from a subscriber. Um, the question basically asks, so it's a longer question, I'm going to summarize it here into a few pieces. Um, they go in to explain a little bit about how they're good at communication, they have good interpersonal skills, um, they like to work on teams, but they also like to work individually, uh, they're good at explaining complex ideas, and so they want to know like if they would be good in banking and or hedge funds, kind of on the investing side. That's kind of the first question we're gonna answer. And then the second part of it is gonna be, um, is a career in banking or at a quant, you know, hedge fund right for me? Um, what job at a hedge fund or banking would suit me best? Basically, and you know, in the long run, do you think there is still a good career for quantitative finance? So this is gonna be challenging to answer because there's so many facets and things I would like to cover that are individual topics that I could do entire videos on. Um, but we're gonna to try to do this quickly. Um, so first off, just to give you a short answer, if you want to like click away, just get a quick answer. Um, quick answer is, yeah, you'd be great in quantitative finance. Okay, that's it. Uh, Career-wise, you think there's a good long-term career? Yes, I do. Okay, those are the, the simple answers. Yes to both. Um, now to dive into the details of why this is going to be somewhat different to think about and kind of look at the different angles. The first thing here is going to be, um, everybody assumes I work in finance because I work at a bank. The truth is, is I don't do finance. I don't work in finance. I don't want anything to do with finance, right? Realistically, I'm not a finance person. So me personally, I have an undergrad in finance. I worked in corporate finance and accounting for eight years, um, but I work in quantitative finance. Quantitative finance essentially has nothing to do with finance. I know it's really shocking to find out. Uh, I think it's one of the biggest eye openers and like the frustrations of those on the finance side is they think like I know finance and therefore I'm gonna be a financial engineer. It's really not that possible to be honest with you. It's extremely challenging to make the jump. Um, the reason being is that quantitative finance is realistically like 95% math, statistics, and computer science and 5% finance. And then when people start looking at degrees and things, right, you say, oh, I have a finance degree. I know the 5%, I'm gonna go and get a master's. I'm gonna learn that other 95%. Um, for master's degrees, they assume you already know all the math, stats, and computer science in one nutshell at an undergrad level. So you should have a math degree or an engineering degree. And then they assume that they'll just teach you the finance because it's only 5%. They can catch you up in a few weeks. And then you have to learn on top of all that a mastery level of stats, math, uh, computer science, and a little bit of finance kind of thrown in um, at a mastery level. So realistically, I do not work in finance. I do not consider myself a banker. And I don't think anybody in quantitative finance is considered a banker or a finance person. So this is one reason why I would say you'd probably fit better um, in quantitative finance because your background, your enjoyment of like working with data, for example, those are gonna be things that are gonna be enhanced and looked at a lot on the job side for quantitative finance um, and not so much on the finance side. So another thing which I'm sure you're kind of thinking in the back of your mind, but you don't want to say it because it's not politically correct, is there's a lot of alpha males in the finance investment side. Um, this is definitely a finance perspective. I can definitely echo that with a finance undergrad. There's a lot of guys in there that are like the frat bros, um, the, you know, the alpha male kind of guys. And, oh, we're going to go out there and be investors and we're going to take all this money. And we're like, I don't know, they're super intense. I don't get along with these types of personalities typically. Um, but just to kind of like support your idea here, there's not really those that many of those people in quantitative finance, if any. I don't think I've ever met an alpha male frat bro, super intense investing Wall Streety kind of finance guy in quantitative finance. Um, it just doesn't happen because the skill sets and personalities that make you succeed in quantitative finance are very different from what you would see in finance. So very different and even like in traditional finance yes there are the frat bro alpha male ridiculous types of personalities in my opinion but there's actually a lot of people in traditional finance that don't fit that mold that aren't that personality um i was one of those i did work in corporate finance um if i would have went and got an mba you know i would have worked probably in like mergers and acquisitions or something so i would have had more of the like fancy investing banking kind of jobs i don't know but that personality and stereotype, I think, is a small fraction of the finance community. Yes, it does get promoted through ridiculous videos like The Wolf on Wall Street and all that. But no, I wouldn't worry about that personality, even if you go into the traditional finance route.
All right, so now to cover more or less the long-term career stability in quantitative finance and hedge funds. Um, so just to start off with, yes, there's banking and there's like investing. So I wouldn't put it as hedge funds, but there's investing. The investing side is more focused on like squeezing profits out of things. Um, from an industry perspective, I see it essentially going away. The traditional finance route is going to get squeezed to death and there's not going to be anything left. Uh, which is great for quantitative finance because what's actually pushing out traditional investing is going to be quantitative finance. So looking at this from different perspectives here, right? Diversification and simple investing is always going to be the best option for the vast majority of people in the world. Uh, for example, I don't spend a lot of my time doing personal investing. I don't have the time, right? I have a full-time job or a YouTube channel. Um, most people have lives. They have families and jobs and careers and other things they're doing. They don't have time to like spend, I don't know, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week on your computer uh, building models and looking at, you know, intricacies of data and trying to find the optimal arbitrage opportunity for investing. Um, so in general, passive investing is always going to be there. I think it's going to be the king. It's lasted the longest. It has the best performance. Uh, you really can't beat diversification, especially when looking at long, long time frames. That being said, the investment community, the quantitative finance route is looking at new data, new information, um, leveraging methodology. So statistical arbitrage is probably the most successful uh, approach to actually making profits um, from an investing standpoint. That's an active standpoint here. So quantitative finance, if you want to go that route on the investing side, there's definitely going to be a career in that. The personalities for that might be slightly different depending on the firms you end up at. But in general, it's going to be a little more intense. It's going to be a little more, I guess, interactive, but it really depends on your role. So those that are working in research, for example, almost always have PhDs. So if you want to go into research, I'd recommend getting a PhD. Um, you're going to get a PhD and you're going to be having your head in a book, doing research, um, coming up with market strategies and putting everything together. Uh, this is most similar to most quant jobs. Uh, if you want to be a trader, do something like that in a quantitative fund, I don't really consider that quant. Um, you're not doing a lot of math and stats. You're more or less just implementing tools and taking in strategies. This is where traditional finance, I think, will still stick around, but their roles will shift and change. I think they excel more in that realm as well, especially if you look at sales and trading. Um, sales is really relationship-based, so having good interpersonal skills, communication skills um, would be an advantage here. It's also where I think traditional finance will end up getting put in the final paradigm, um, but is this gonna shift and they're gonna go away traditional finance? Yes, I think so, but the timelines might be like 30, 40, 50 years. It's gonna take a long time. Uh, there's a lot of fighting going on between different departments, between the business side and the quant side, um, different technologies, even advancements with like machine learning and data science. It's just, it's in flux. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of competition going on. It's gonna take a while, I think, to get to a state where everyone's more or less on the same page. And then looking at banking careers really quick, banking careers are much slower than investing kind of jobs and roles. The reason being is that banks are looking at large, large portfolios. Um, a lot of times we're not interested in milking out like pennies. So we're not doing like hedge funds where it's like you're doing uh, algorithmic trading and specifically on like the market making high frequency side where you're making like fractions of pennies, but you're doing millions of trades and you're executing and trying to like squeeze out that little bit of extra alpha, right? Um, banks are looking at things from a very large picture. We have a lot of capital, we have a lot of money. We wanna do like commercial lending, for example. We wanna do, you know, retail banking like for mortgages or for auto or credit cards, right? These are things that we're gonna look at and we're gonna sit and make our, you know, a really good strategy and a really good pricing. And we have lots of time to build these models um, investing is not like that. Investing is very fast. It's very quick. Things are moving. Things are dynamic. Um, again, on the banking side, we're slower. We're doing massive, massive positions here, but at the same time, we have a lot more time to think about it. So I think banking has better um, work-life balance. Um, it's going to be a little bit more stimulating, I think, on the intellectual side. Investing, though, so don't take that as a negative, but investing though is gonna be very stimulating on the fact that you're gonna be cutting edge doing a lot different research and technologies. Banking's quite slow on that. We don't like to adapt very quickly. Um, again, a lot of people in banking are somewhat fearful of new things. Investing side is completely opposite. They're excited, they're willing to do research um, and cutting edge kind of technology, but you need to be more in a research position. 
Um, so that's kind of the pros and cons here. Uh, again, the work-life balance is not going to be as well on the investment side, but you will be comped for that and you will make more money. So those are just my takeaways here on kind of analyzing if you have different skills, like should you go into traditional finance, should you go into quantitative finance, um, is quantitative finance even right for you? Um, again, just to summarize all this up here, quantitative finance is not finance. Uh, it's very different. The personalities are very different here. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.